Devin Pike with the Dallas Film Society, and if you take a room of 100 people and use that as your sample size for the population of the planet Earth, 17 of them would not have ready access to potable drinking water. That's the subject of the film, handled in three different vignette and plot points by Derek Watson's film, This Is Normal. Derek joins us right now. First, Derek, thanks for bringing this film to Dallas. We really appreciate it. Oh, thanks, Devin. I appreciate you having me having me here to get a chance to talk about it. So um, it's, it's a subject that in, in, in a developed country, in an old world country, industrialized mm -hmm. nation, it's almost unfathomable that people would have any kind of a barrier to the most plentiful source on the planet, and yet that winds up being the case over and over again. How did you wind up making this the subject of your film? Well, uh, clean, ac clean water and clean access to water has been, uh, has been something that's been on my mind for a while. I mean, anytime you travel overseas, you, you see the same scene play out over and over and over again. You see young women and children walking long distances to collect water, and um, that water is slowly killing them. And you know, you made a really great point that it's hard for us to even imagine that that's an issue. But if you look just 100 years back, um, we, were, we, were, we were in the exact same position. So I live in Oklahoma, and 100 years ago when, um, when the land run happened, I mean, we were in the exact same situation. I mean, I mean, we had people walking long distances to collect water that was slowly killing them. And so the real thing, the real, uh, the real quest this film kind of tries to, tries to discover is, okay, is there a way for us to speed up those next 50 years? I mean, because in 50 years we had completely eradicated the, the, the crisis here in the States. Um, why isn't that happening in Africa? And so that's what the film is kind of about. So you, you take the tact of showing it, not, not from a, um, an Al Gore or Inconvenient Truth kind of global view, but you drill down very specifically on three different plot lines. Talk a little bit about writing those scripts out. Sure, yeah. Well, what, what um, we, I kept seeing this normal theme that kind of played through every, every aspect of the film. And so, so one normal that is, uh, that is completely normal is, uh, is the story of Petronella, who is uh, who's one of the, the subjects of our film. She is a, a, a woman with eight children who lives in a remote village in Africa, and she walks uh, two kilometers one way to collect water, and, um, and the water is drawn from a lake, which you and I would not even let our dogs drink out of, to be honest with you. And, um, and so that was a really important normal. Another normal was, uh, was a guy named Jimmy Comfoy, who was a kid that, he has, he's a kid, he's my age, but he's, uh, he has uh, two kids and a, and a wife, and he desperately wants to support his kids. And, and, and his kids wake him up in the morning saying, Daddy, I'm hungry, and he has no way to feed them. Um, again, completely normal. And then another normal was a man named Dick Greenlee, who, uh, who runs a very successful pump company in Oklahoma, who you know, chased the American dream and caught it. And, you know, for a lot of us, we think, oh, well, that's the goal. You know, when you have this great company, we're making a great living. We're on this glide path to retirement, as he says. And, uh, but he's completely left unsatisfied and, and has no purpose. And so what we do is we try to weave these three stories together, and they all kind of converge with a hole in the ground in a far remote village in Zambia, and all of those normals change. When you're looking at the the day-to-day -day and, and the whole this is normal, this is normal, does it almost become mind-numbing mm -hmm. to a viewer who's looking at it from the outside in mm -hmm. because yes it's normal, it's the way of life mm -hmm. for them, but after a while you almost, mm -hmm. how is, how, I'm sorry, I'm just, it, it just works me up, how do you not get calloused to the situation mm -hmm. either when you're in it or as an outside observer, it's like, well, how can I change this? Yeah, no, that's a great question. And you know, this has been a problem that we've had since the dawn of time. You know, that that this is an issue that we've all that we've struggled with. We've just forgotten about it here in the states. So, you know, when you hear numbers like almost 5,000 children dying every day uh, because of the lack of access to clean water, and that's 10 jumbo jets that are falling out of the sky every single day that nobody's reporting on. And the reason why is because it's normal. So yes, it is hard for us. It is easy, easier, easy for us to get callous. But hopefully, what this film is about is more about hope and a change and changing that normal. And that that you know we stand on the cusp uh, as uh, as a people that we can see the end of the water crisis and within our lifetime in Africa and, and across the world. And it's just a matter of us putting our mind to it and putting our resources together and saying, you know what this is something that's going to stop. This is going to be something that's going to stop with us. We've made amazing strides as, uh, as a populace to eradicate hunger, and mm -hmm. the, the goal, I think, is to get it within 1% by 2020. Uh, the, sure. the, the numbers that have come out from UNESCO have been amazing. Is there a similar goal and um, effort in place 
with water globally. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, the UN has come out with uh, with the Millennium Water Goals, where where they're actually kind of on par to to decrease these numbers. Uh, you know, well, what's exciting, uh, I feel like, through this film is we follow an organization called Water4 that is putting the solution in the hands of people in Africa, in the hands of guys like Jimmy who don't have a job, and they are, they are able to bring in hand drilling tools and eradicate the crisis uh, village by village. And, you know, when you start to see um, when you start to see an organization like this putting sustainable solutions in the hands of people to bring themselves out of this, this situation, you start to realize, man, maybe there really is hope. And I, and I really think there is, and it's going to be exciting to see. It's just a matter of us all kind of getting involved. Uh, this is normal, is on the festival circuit now. Are there plans for distribution uh, later on down the road? You know, we would love for that to happen. You know, we feel like this is a story that, that we need the entire world to know, which is why we're so glad, Devin, that you're asking um, us to kind of come and get to talk about it. Uh, you know, we hope... We really feel that if, if everybody got involved and if everybody knew the crisis in an intimate way, that, um, that we would see it, see it uh, come to its demise. So. Well, sincerely, it's, it's a powerful film, and I hope people get a chance to actually let the message get in there and find out a way to get involved in, in the fight against you know, people in any part of the world mm -hmm. not having access to water. Uh, if you want to find out more information about This Is Normal or any of the other films at the festival, please visit DallasFilm.org. Derek, thank you so much for bringing us Thank you. Appreciate it. Absolutely.